What's up, guys? I'm Onyx with Borg Josh. Hey. You know him. He's the guy. It's me. I'm the guy. We are doing a new and improved episode of the podcast. Um, we still have said it. Midnight Phoenix, but we don't know what we're going to call it now. Might just be, I don't know, I mean, you'll know by the, mm -hmm. you know, the title. But, yes, the new and improved podcast. Or, or if you guys have any name suggestions, let us know, and maybe we'll change it to that. Yeah, who knows? Uh, you, who knows? You probably know better than we do. Yeah, we are what they call uh, idiots, morons, dumbies. Idiots. McFazzle doodles. Uh, not that last one, that's just you. Uh, that's racist. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, we've been, I'm sure you know, uh, we've sort of took a break, week break, to, well, why, why don't you go ahead, Josh? Um, so, we took a break to try to kind of recuperate. Um, a lot of our team is in, like, school, and they have jobs and, you know, personal lives, and uh, it, it was becoming a lot of pressure for us to, like, make sure videos are getting edited and out and like because we we're pressuring all this without having like a clear uh like production i guess and to say what is that a good word to say nathan uh yeah it's sort of like a clear um workflow yeah um because of that we uh like our production kind of dropped it would like have its peaks and then would fall because we weren't doing stuff can consistently and it kind of like had an effect on us, like, all, kind of, like, we felt, like, a bit, um, what's the word I'm looking for? There were some times where we had to record ed and edit a video and get it out, like, on the next day or the same day, and that just yeah. sort of drains you, um, but we're looking to, to improve that. Yeah, uh, we're, we're planning to up our production on everything, mm -hmm. production uh, value. to invest more time on things, to make sure that we're having the best people on board, and just investing more to this because what you guys may not know is like this is like i wouldn't say our livelihoods because i mean we're not making money off this right now but we're really building upon this because this is what we want to do for our careers and lives it's not our livelihoods but it is our lives yeah like it really ha makes me happy to see like uh comments and just uh, the reactions to our videos that we post Dude. especially like whenever we like invest a lot of time to edit them and record mm. them when you feel like they're great. It's, it's just nice to be appreciated. Uh, and yeah. sort of speaking about that, on that topic, we are almost at 150 subscribers. Oh, yeah. There are 150 of you, or almost, and that is awesome. That is very awesome. Big thumbs up. Thank you. All all each and every one of you. Yes. All, all two of them. All two of them. All two of the people or all two of the thumbs? All two of the thumbs. You're going to have to split between all 150 years. Sorry about that. I have to cut up my thumbs <laughs> into little pieces. Yes. Uh, I don't think I have enough thumb, Nathan. I mean, I don't know. Between the, the two of us. Thumb? I don't know. <laughs> okay, what if we use a, a foot? There's like over 200 oh. bones. <laughs> I, I don't know how many people have foot fetishes for our subscribers <laughs> mm. and I kind of don't want to know. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, that's, that's right. That's that, a good that point. That isn't something we need to know. Don't, if you guys don't have foot fetishes, <laughs> then you can enjoy that, but keep your feet away from meats. Keep your feet one million feet away from us. If you foot fetishes. A million foot away from us. <laughs> Ooh, a million feet. <laughs> a million feet. You say why? Oh, no. <laughs> uh... uh. It's, it's, I miss doing this, honestly. I'm, I'm glad we're doing it again. Yeah. Um, I thought you were going to go into, like, when you talk, start talking about Jet Lab, they are going to go into Whitmore and such. Uh, but yeah, that's oh. sort of what we've been doing. Um, partially just to up the production value and get things sort of ready. Um, waiting. Ready and waiting. You might notice at the end of this video something new, um, which you can expect a lot more of in the other videos. Can you guess what it is? I mean, dun, 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 no skipping ahead. Da, da, Who knows? Da. Guess what? We died at the end of the video. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, so let's talk about new projects. Is there anything new going on in your life, Nathan, or that we're doing that you want to talk about? 
Oh. If you want to spoil out there, mm, give the fresh beans. Spill those beans. Spill those beans. Um, Spill those beans. You know, I gotta be a hundred percent honest with you. I don't know what you're talking about. Really? Yeah. Um. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, uh, let's think. Um, we're gonna up our production. Yeah. Yeah. We are doing That's... better show things and whatnot. Is that uh, new? Yes. Okay. Maybe. Technically. <laughs> I mean, if you sure. consider the fact that... Well, compare this video to that video. I don't know where I'm going you with this. Never mind. got me there. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, we... Well, actually, there is something. It's not really... So this is GPS, as you all know. Um, and... But Josh and I also... GPS stands for Gilded Phoenix Studios. Yes. Um, it, we're not a... Uh, what, what is it? Global is positioning it? system. Yes. I wish I was. I wish I wasn't. <laughs> Why not? Because they know where I am, and I know where everything else is. People are going to ask me for directions. I don't think they can talk to me. <laughs> that's, that's very valid. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, this is GPS. We will not give you directions unless it's the subscribe button. Um, hey. And Josh and I also have Winmore Productions, um, which... Go ahead. Have we ever, like, gone in depth of Winmore on a podcast? Several times, I'm sure. Um, okay, then never mind. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, do it. New people. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Are you, no. you sure? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> well, so, Winmore is Nathan and I's baby. That sounds weird, but, you know, it's... It's true. It's, a. Uh, yeah. So, in a creative field... It's very difficult to find jobs. It's very difficult to do what you love and make money off of it, right? As you um, can tell by us not making money off of this. <laughs> and many, many other like artists and creators of any sort who put everything into what they make but can't make an income. Um, so, uh, Winmore, our like, biggest goal is to become a multimedia production company so that people like, uh, let's say, any kind of artists, graphic designers, animators, people who make music, uh, filmmakers, Film. yeah. just anything, uh, could come together and we'd be a company where we can make our own work, you know, uh, have a job where it's actually making money off of doing the work. And we can also have like clients by like selling our services so if people want like a promo done they can go to filmmaking uh, department uh, if someone wants like a graphic made for their uh, company or something we have a graphic design people or you know stuff like that so um whenever we say we're this is our livelihood this is what we're mm -hmm. saying is like we're trying to establish this like it's very very early on right now and it's like you know it's hard to do because it is starting a business it's just very it's in its earliest works, but it's very promising for what we're doing. We're laying out the foundation, basically. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, Guild of Phoenix Studios is a part of that. Um, just sort of more, less of a, like, a thing that we would rent out to make money, obviously. But yeah. just to, to sort of have fun and and do what we want to do at the same time. Um, I mean, overall, like, Winmore is just people who want to create things and still want to be able to survive in life. Because you can't survive without money nowadays. Or pretty much any time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's sort of what we'll be um, doing as well also. Doing more of. Yeah, we have been doing it, just mm -hmm. it's sort of been about the back burner. And you can check us out on, um, well, we have a website, uh, it's it's in the works. It's in the works. It's, yeah. it's getting redone. I'll put it in the link in the description anyway. Yeah. Uh, we got uh, our own YouTube, uh, I'll put that in the description as well. Productions. Yeah, Win More Productions. Yeah, Win um, where, where we have short films and such, and Josh, well... Actually, hmm? you want to talk about some of our short films, please? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, let me, uh, let me pull up what we actually have for a bond I, I there. I remember a few of them. Like, yeah, I, know I, just... I have, uh, the Regret short on there, and then I know I have the trailer I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Those are the so two I show the most. You have Chase, rough test footage. Mm. Regrets. In the negative, and of okay. forest experimental short. If you want to talk oh, yeah, about that. those, um, I can talk about the forest real quick. Um, 
so the forest i me and my girlfriend went to uh just a national park that was nearby uh it wasn't anything fancy it was actually this golf course that was shut down and turned into like a preserve so it has like the trails and everything and like the uh pond and everything but it's funny because everything's overgrown so it looks kind of creepy huh. um so we went there and we were just kind of like exploring around and this was like last spring i think and it was really nice because like it was like a really nice day where it wasn't too hot wasn't too cold and um there was like some nature just happening and i was just getting some random footage with that because i like had just gotten my new camera and i was like experimenting like oh yeah ooh, i can learn how to use the camera and this is before i realized about white balance and focus <laughs> so there was slight issues in that but yeah um, yeah that was the, the first thing you ever did really right? oh yeah that was the first thing i ever did on my own uh so i shot it and i didn't like the audio for it so i, I got stock footage of like you know people noises like crowds and like heavy traffic and crowd cheering Just and i living. tried to like yeah i, I made it so it kind of like conflicts because uh i thought it would be weird or kind of interesting to have um something at nature where you think of like quiet and kind of like just wind or just plant noises whatever and have it like loud in your ear so kind of like plays off on your ears and your sight and yeah uh i probably should redo it now that i think about it because like i i had some good shots in there but i didn't know what i was doing because it was literally like my first real short mm-hmm but honestly, it was it was fun to learn about. I do remember we were there, and I was walking next to one of the ponds, and I got terrified and jumped because I thought there was a, an alligator in the water, and it was one of the plastic ones because it was a golf course. And I was like, why did they leave that in there? Good question. Ah, uh, your turn. Uh, so yeah, I've on the Wonder Woman Productions YouTube channel, I have two shorts, um, Mugging and Scion. These are all student films, by the way. Uh, I've I had one part or another in them. Uh, Scion was actually my capstone, which uh, I gotta be honest, I did not understand, and I took that way too early. I have no uh, idea what a capstone is. Still, it's um, it's like your penultimate like project, or I don't or know your what ultimate. Penultimate means <laughs> second to last. It's like the the one of the last things you do. In... Never use the word penultimate again. <sighs> I'm sorry, Nathan. <laughs> you cannot. Whatever. It's one. So, Sion was my uh, capstone glass, um, and it's based off of Andy Weir's The Egg. Andy Weir, you might recognize him. Um, he wrote The Martian, and he also wrote the oh, short story. Yeah, um, that was a good movie and a, a pretty good book. Um, I think yeah. you have it. I have The Martian. Yeah, it's literally yeah. right next to me. Um. And he also wrote a short story called The Egg, where basically you... Well, I don't want to really spoil it, but it's really good. It's, it's really neat uh, and, and a very interesting concept. And it, it just sort of goes through that. Um, that was pretty fun, shooting. Um, the One thing I really like about shooting all of this stuff is that you really... Every time you go through any sort of shoot or set or process, you learn every time things that oh, you yeah. can do differently and better and use those skills for the next time literally every single one of my shoots on the channel i've learned so much from them like the forest one i learned focus and white balance um the regret short i learned <laughs> for one don't have three cameras if you don't need them <laughs> and then two don't give people don't put people on camera if they don't know what they're doing. Oof, yeah, I learned that one too. <laughs> yeah. It's a hard lesson to learn because... Yeah. Yeah. Cause, like, the footage is different in the regret short film. Um, because we had issues because uh, there was changing in frame rates and uh, ISO, and then, like, we were using spotlights that had different frequencies, so it showed up, like, banding, mm. and uh <laughs> No, no good. But, you know, hey, maybe you can redo that one, too. Uh, honestly, the story's not bad. Um, honestly, the ending I really like. I, I really love the ending from, like, the trunk to the, the trunk closing. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's all good. But, like, the inside stuff was always an issue. 
It's only because, like, um, the actual suit itself was very, very, rushed. very, very last minute and rushed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cyan was honestly the same way. That was all shot in one day, and it really should not have been. Regrets was shot in two hours. <sighs> And that, you might, okay, for people who don't understand, like, filmmaking, it's two hours might sound like plenty of time to shoot a film, but it is not. It's you like, have to take time to set up, you have to take time to, like, figure out angles and, like, lighting and everything, props. Oh, this is showing up in this shot. Oh, how do we want this to be played out? It is so stressful. And a lot of times, when we have spaces for so long that we have to just go for it and if it like doesn't turn out as well as you think you're gonna have to like figure out what you can do with that footage honestly ideally all of that stuff would have been done pre-production on like a different day you know uh, storyboarding uh prop props list mm. it, pretty much everything uh but you don't always get that you know opportunity yeah. sometimes you just gotta do what you can uh like with mugging um that was a class project where we were given a, everyone was like drawn out of hat. We got a location or two locations uh, and a, like a kit and we had to make do with make do with that. Couldn't leave those locations. Couldn't use anything else pretty much um, and just do whatever you like. And we got this really spooky hallway or a staircase. It was like, it was off the theater and like no one uses it. So first of all, it stank like something died in there. Uh, did. Yeah. Uh, so luckily for the actor, there was you were wearing a gas mask. Not lucky you for were? me. No, the, the the actor. You said lucky you were. Lucky for the actor, oh. you were wearing a gas mask. Um, and then the other one was this like sunny, brightly lit outdoors catwalk kind of thing across a uh, sky bridge. Oh, is that the kind of oh, I never understood why you picked those two locations. <laughs> no, we, we didn't pick them. Yeah, we uh, we were. They don't make them. any sense. No, it, they really don't. Um, like the lighting but, in the hallway, or not hallway, but the stairway is terrible. Uh huh. Um, but we just you know we worked with what we were given, uh, and you just work with what you have to the best of your ability. And uh, honestly, yeah. I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. Ooh. Ooh, I just had a spicy idea. Oh, what's that? Okay. So, we have our films picked on the channel, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And, uh, what if we picked out, or what if we picked for each other our films and have the other one critique it as brutal as they can? (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) My poor, fragile, fragile heart. Oh, that too. Uh, Uh, Okay, we won't do that. I'm down. <laughs> we can do that a different time. Yeah. Because I just realized, I, I'm just, you can see that we're talking a lot about our short films, and mm-hmm. quite a few of them are well, on our channel, like when uh, we're productive, so you should go ahead and see that. Yeah, I'm also, you, know, you know, watch the old Phoenix stuff as well, but yeah, our, if you like live action stuff, filmmaking, yeah. go to win more. Our short films are probably like the closest to heart, the closest to what we're working towards, um, mm. so... I don't know about Josh, but I really put a lot of stock in. It's just it's just stock. my favorite part. Yeah, you know, I put a lot of stock in it. Like like for soup? No, like like. Man, for soup. read a dictionary. <laughs> no. Putting stock in things, penultimate. No one uses these words the way you use them. You sound like a fifty year old man. You're twenty one. I am a fifty year old man. Oh my god, you need to fucking age up I mean date down, old man. <laughs> these young kids getting off my pocket. You say these chocolate kids getting <laughs> in my pocket? <laughs> these young kids getting in my podcast. These chocolate kids getting in my podcast. <laughs> Pod- Young kids, I don't know where you're getting chocolate from. Anyway, yeah, so these are these are really closest to heart. And it's just, being on a set, honestly, there's no other feeling like it. No, really. It just, like, most of it is literally just waiting around and prepping things, making sure gear is right, and running into problems every five minutes. It's very stressful, it. yeah. But it just feels so right, before, personally me. Yeah, before, um... When I was growing up, I never really knew what I wanted to do exactly. And even when, like, I was just sort of like, Josh and I, we have been friends for a long time, even by then. And, uh, we have? 
I mean, around eight, what time was this? Eight years. Now. Uh, this was it's been um, nine years. This wow. was, I, th- I think it was sophomore year of high school, high school which would have been um, three years ago. No, 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 That's more than that. Way more than that. that. We would have been. That would have been like five years ago. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We're 21. Uh, and I was just sort of like, we are? <laughs> but I was just sort of like, uh, Josh was super into filmmaking even then. And I was. I, yeah. And absolutely. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I was just, we were just like. You know what? I'll I'll join you. I, I yeah, okay. I no, no, that. that's not what happened. I remember, I was looking up filmmaking stuff for you just to sort yeah. of help you because like I still don't know what I want to do. And then the more I looked into it, the more I was like, too excited you too. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I do remember that part. I remember literally, I was in such a bad place, mm. like mentally. I had no idea what I wanted to do, and then it wasn't software year. This was like senior year actually this was like actually i think this was the year after senior year where we weren't doing anything no i, mean, I think we, we really started especially with gps earlier but yeah as yeah, we far as gps no actually gps was gps was, was definitely high, that was year. senior year that was senior year no i remember because i remember the uh the when i how I came up with gilly phoenix was part of a yeah. school thing no we didn't start videos year. We never made videos until like 2016 or 2017. Hmm. Yeah, that does yeah. sound right. But yeah, anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh, oh, I was gonna say, I remember because I was in a bad place, and then I got really into filmmaking because I, re- I was thinking more about like the fact that like, whenever I was a kid, I would like, I, I would love camcorders, I would love recording things, I'd like make little talk shows with like stuffed animals and stuff, and like, cracker and Sausage. Sausage, Sausage and, and cracker. cracker. I, that was a story, a comic book story I had. But, like, I love creating stories so much. And, like, I never really put together that I could be a filmmaker. It, it wasn't a job in my head. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I kind of learned about it and that it was even a major. And that's what kind of got my interest in it. I started talking to Nathan about it. And Nathan didn't know what he was doing at the time. So then he got into it. And then I was going to school for general studies. And he was going to school for filmmaking. And I got a little bit jealous. <sighs> and then I wasn't going to school. And I tried to go to a different school for filmmaking. And that didn't work out. And I moved to New Jersey. And I'm going to school. And he's also going to school. Then I stopped going to school because, you know. <laughs> okay. School. School is difficult when you're a creator or a filmmaker. Um, so what were you going to say? It all depends on the individual, like what they need and and, how, and what fits you best. Uh, we're not saying like don't go to school, um, even for filmmaking, which you know, aside from like some technical stuff, isn't really needed. Um, it's it's like not even needed with that. There's an entire like branch of social media, or I think it's a website too, where it's like no film school. Like, do yeah, no film film school. film school or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like That's uh, it. and like I really see it now because uh. So I've gone for three semesters, which is not a lot. Uh, the first two semesters I had, I took film one, film two, and then I took like photography and some general art classes and general studies. So I have all my general studies out of the way. But the last few classes I have left in my major are all art-related. Not film-related, art-related. As in like drawing and sculpting and stuff like that. Which I can understand how that can affect like the filmmaking world. But at the same time, what I'm trying to do is directing and writing and, like, cinematography and stuff. But there's no more classes for me to do that. And it feels like I'd be kind of wasting my money because I'd be doing, like, I'd be drawing whenever I just want to hold a camera and just shoot stuff. So Mm -hmm. I'm taking, like, a break. I'm going to be trying to kind of find my own way into the film world without school, which is going to be tough. Um, there's many options. Yeah. And, and Nathan, how about you tell your Yeah, I was going to say, say, I think you you got a good start already. Um, but yeah, so my schooling, um, well, I went to, call, went to high school, uh, took a bit of a, a, like a gap year, not really sure what I wanted to do. Um, so I ended up going to uh, uh, holding a um, medium wa- minimum, minimum wage job for couple of months till I was like, hold on, you know, I do, I do really want to go to college. Um, and now, you know, that was the time when I figured out 
made me want to do film. So I was like, I now know what I want to do. So I'm just going to quit now. I don't want to be at this job anymore. And I uh, go to uh, my local community college. And they had just, uh, a, they had just like got a new building for a, a major of uh, live entertainment technology for video production. Uh, is the, that's the video track, which is what I went into. And uh, I'm still in it, but I've done everything I needed except a couple of classes. Uh, however, I need to take all of those classes on separate semesters because they're not offered the same semester, which really sucks because that just draws out the time. Um, but yeah, I'm still going technically. I'm, I'm actually in summer classes right now. Um, my last general class, uh, sociology, uh, it's going all right. Um, and then one thing I'm looking forward to, my professor last semester said that he was going to look into uh, getting all of us to take a uh, get a certificate in uh, steady cam operation, which if you don't know, is those, it's like a, imagine a laser tag suit, um, but instead of a gun, you're holding a, like, an arm. Why don't you just say, like, a vest with an arm that holds the camera? Well, sure, but it's also bulky with... Yeah, it's what he said. Same thing. <laughs> it's just the first thing that came to mind. It's, um, like... It, it's huge. Uh-huh. Um, it, it can weigh a lot, um, obviously, to mm -hmm. hold the camera, not even including the camera. But I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, that's sort of a specialized skill that I'm hoping will really help me in my career. Um, yeah, and I, I did, you know, I did some uh, student films, short films. Um, I haven't been able to get onto any sort of actual sets or anything, which is unfortunate. Uh, but honestly, for me, schooling is 90% networking, uh, which I actually am not too good at, to be honest. Um, but it's still, it can still be valuable experience and whatnot, I was able to get a internship at the Houston uh, Livestock Show and Rodeo through school, which is which was a great uh, experience as well. Uh, and, you know, it was through school that I was on my capstone class that I talked about earlier, where I really realized that being on a set is just, like, being a filmmaker is just my calling. And I honestly never really believed in having a quote-unquote calling before but, but like josh like josh said there's just no but nathan, no feeling like it but nathan but josh do you believe in life after love do you believe in love after life no that's too bad oh i sorry. love you bro well <laughs> i wouldn't go that far <laughs> <laughs> rude i'm kidding <laughs> anyways continue what you're saying yeah, no, that was it. Um, that's that's pretty much that was my been my experience with school and uh, film so far. Uh. Hmm. Well, I would like to talk about our future projects that we're going to try to work on. That may include GPS or Windmore or just what we want to do in general. <clears throat> okay, so personally, uh, well, this is kind of personal, kind of not. I am trying to plan on doing regular vlogs because that would help me like pick up a camera every single day and edit every single day which would improve my skills as a filmmaker in general um and i've been like thinking about it for i think a month or two now but I never went into it because i i have a weird thing about um like Things will come to me, like opportunities, and I'll like, oh, wow, that is actually an amazing opportunity. And instead of taking it, I kind of just uh, let it pass me by because I feel, I don't know. It's just, blah. Like, uh, I could have taught a, uh, a film class at my college over the sum this summer, and I forgot to email the person because I was thinking, I highly doubt that I'd even be able to do it. I probably don't know what I'm doing. And it just kind of, yeah. I should have really taken that chance, because I really think that would have been, like, 
really beneficial for me. And I could like I could have learned from teaching. And I love talking about film, so when I make it a kind of like a job, maybe it's something that would spark something new, you know? Mm -mm. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna try to do the vlogs regularly. Uh, I'm planning on trying to do like. There's a couple short films that uh, me and some friends have been planning to do, um, like Fresh Air, and then uh, that car scene I wrote. Did you read that, Nathan? Um, it sounds familiar, but I can't. Would you can't like me to tell you about it? Uh, sure, go ahead. Okay, so visually, I really like the uh, the look of silhouettes in cars. Oh shadows, yeah, you know. Yeah, Where, like, I it's like the street light shines down to the window, so you can see like the silhouette of their face. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, this was a. I'm proud of this. I was up in the middle of the night, and I thought, "Hey, why don't I write a script?" And I did, and I'm really happy about that. Uh, so the script, I started writing. I wrote like, "What's on the outside?" Or not, "What's on the outside?" But what's happening? Two people in a car, whatever. And then, I was stuck. I couldn't decide if I wanted it to be like, "Oh, do I want this to be romantic?" Or do I want this to be, like, heartbreaking? And it was hard for me to choose because I hadn't written anything like that before, like, either of those. I'm still learning my whole skills in, like, film and stuff, or writing. Um, so I couldn't decide, so I just did both. I made a, uh, I made it a scene where this couple, it's on their first date, and they meet, and then... You know, they have a good time, they're happy, and they're like, oh, let's see you again. And then it kind of does like a parallel back, and they're, you know, in the car again, same parking lot, but it's been like maybe months to years. We just know they've been together for a long time, and they are just had it with each other, and it's going to start how it, or it's going to end how it started. So I thought that would be interesting to do visually and kind of like show it, its appeal through like, the whole heartbreak, mm -hmm. I guess. The circle of romance. The circle of life. That's an entirely different car scene. What do you mean? It's oh. okay. You'll understand when you're older. Are you talking about what I think you were talking about? That is awesome. not safe for work, my dude. I'm going to have to call your professor. Give me his number and also give me $5,000. But don't ask me why I need the $5,000. You got it. Oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, dude. You got it, dude. Anyways, Nathan. Josh. Tell me, what are your plans? Do you have any um, plans? Uh, so, um... <laughs> hmm. So, I, at the moment, as I said, I'm going to school for this. And uh, I'm really hoping to, to graduate. I really want to graduate. I'm so close, yet so far... Uh, so uh, and I, honestly, it's something that I'm really proud of. Uh, so the only person in my immediate family who's actually like gone to college and and done it, like um, you know, done the full thing, is my dad. Um, and I'm the first person, like not including my dad, my immediate family, to pass college math, even if it was you know sort Ooh. of simple. And I'm really proud of that. But also, uh, it's just taking man. yeah, it's just taking a long time. And one thing that Josh and I have talked about quite extensively, which I'd, we really should talk about more, uh, is after I graduate and we both have some money saved up, I will move up to New Jersey with him where mm -hmm. I from where I currently live in Texas. Uh, that's going to be a hell of a culture shock, uh, I'm sure. I've got... So, I'm looking at my closet right now. I've got entirely t-shirts and like... A I mean, you'll be fine for the pants. summer. It's just mm -hmm. more like only when it's like cold, you'll need the pants. Trust me, you'll you're you're gonna need pants. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, you might it might sound weird for him to like just up and move up here, but it's because um, since we are kind of creating this business and things are kind of kicking off, it'd be more convenient if we were together to work on things and to, to help each other to interact with each other. Yeah, sorry, what are you saying? Just to like help you sound like you're cutting out, I guess. Just to sort of like actually, you know, help each other out and interact with each other and be on the same place, at the same sets and such. Yeah. 
support and, uh, with each other. I think it would like help us both. That way we would have like that whole it we would help motivate each other as well as you know, working and it'd just be nice because me and Nathan have known each other for eight years mm-hmm. and we are trying to like be adults now. So what better way to be an adult with somebody than someone who's known you half of your life? I was going to say, yeah, that might be another thing that sounds strange to people listening where, you know, we've never met IRL, but moving in together. Um, I'm a robot man. <laughs> I am. You're a robot man. I am an axe murderer together on this new hit comedy. Depression? Axe, yes. Oh. <laughs> axe murderer and the robot man in New Jersey. <laughs> That's a working title. Teach me how to feel. Shut up, man. I'm trying to hide the body. Oh, no. <laughs> Quick, open up. Open up. I know that hatch opens in your chest. That like, is where I hide yeah. my internal organs and oh. lack of feelings. How interesting. That's where I hide my internal organs. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 man, what was he even talking about? Yeah, I so... um. Moving on, uh, recently E3 has happened. Ooh, baby. Ooh. Going back to gaming. Going from yeah. film to games. Mm-hmm. We've spent entirely too long on this. We've spent half an hour <laughs> talking about gaming. Dudes. No, we have not. No, we have. We've spent half an I hour mean, talking film. about film. <laughs> Whoops. Um, so E3, uh, lots of good things. Well, actually, mm. before we go to E3. Before we go to E3. Back to film. Back to film. Movies. Movies. Lots of good stuff coming out, upcoming, uh, revealed recently. We talk about Detective talk about Pikachu. Something. No, no, shut up for a second. We need to talk about the most important thing. Something that has to do with film and gaming and life in general. This is the most important thing in everyone's life right now, and you cannot deny that. Do you know what this thing is? Keanu Reeves. I was about to say. It's Keanu, Keanu Reeves. motherfucking Reeves. He the is purest... The- and most amazing man in the entire world, and no one can deny that. I don't care what you say, there's no, there's no way you can say anything bad about him. You can't even say he's a bad actor. You can't say he's a bad person because he's so pure. Keanu like, sold, uh, sold bad copper in 39 AD. What? <laughs> um, so yeah, he's in movies, he's in games, he's in film. Uh, I just said movies. He's in our he, hearts. He's in real life. Um, he was at E3. Uh, he's in John Wick 3, which I think he's already come out, right? Oh, yeah, I think sure. so. I'm, okay, yeah. I have a confession. I've never seen John Wick 1 or 2. Me either. <laughs> um, but, hey, I'm sure it's awesome. Uh, everyone oh, knows about the dog. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that guy's just got to stop getting dogs. Oh, I don't gosh. actually know if that's what happens, but... I don't think so. <laughs> for the first one, and then the other two are, like, uh, they're coming for revenge for killing for him killing them all. I don't really know. John Wick Anyways. 4, 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> uh, Let's talk about a movie we've seen. Uh, did you see Detective Pikachu? Detective Pikachu. You saw Detective Pikachu, and it's That's been long enough so we can talk about it. What yes. did you think about the whole quote-unquote twist with his dad being uh, Pikachu? Um, I gotta be honest, I didn't see it coming. <laughs> really? No, I didn't. Not until, um, like... Not until the ending? Well, yeah, pretty much whenever um, the the villain was started talking about he want how he wanted to combine p- uh, Pokemon and their trainers, that's when I got it. So it took you uh, that long. Okay, I, I I walked into the movie theater and after they said he died, I was immediately like, and there's a Pikachu and no one's, re- and that's him. Isn't that clearly <laughs> him? And I was like kind of a bit annoyed just because I felt it was so obvious. And then whenever they like. Whenever they said like, he was with you the entire time, I was like, yeah, I thought yeah. that was obvious. Like, how else does he make it? How else is he say the exact things so that <laughs> it sounds very comforting, you know? Mm-hmm. He's very persuasive for an animal that's never spoken before. And then, like, <laughs> I love that Ryan Reynolds is his dad. It's just uh-huh. so unfitting of him because Ryan Reynolds... <laughs> In him, not, don't, he, he looks not. too young to be his dad. Like uh-huh. he was like eighteen to twenty one. Uh, what's his name? Um. Well, to be oh. fair, it was his stepdad, wasn't it? No, that was his dad. It was it was it the stepmom? No, it, it was his. Okay, his separated. mom died. Yeah. 
like that. Like his mom was black and his, he Ryan Reynolds was white, so that's how they got him to be, I guess, mixed. But mm. it was just like funny to me because I was just like, this is so kind of weird if you think about it. Because uh-huh. on one hand, it feels like, like I know they went they wanted Ryan Reynolds from the beginning because they used lines from Deadpool mm-hmm. to show him with the rendered Pikachu to convince him to sign on board. So it makes me wonder how they got. Uh, I forgot his name. It's really bothering me. What is his name? Uh, who? The, the the main character. Oh, uh, I don't know actually. Uh, Elijah Wood. <laughs> that is not Elijah Wood. <laughs> oh my god. No, no, it's not. Um, uh, okay. Uh, I'm thinking. Hold on, I'm looking it up. I'm looking up uh, his name. I. Um. No, that's that's not it. That is. Not Why is it. this giving me just ratings? We don't need ratings. Justice. <laughs> Justice Smith. Justice Smith? Are you That's serious? That's his real name. <laughs> this, the, the actor's name. That No, yeah, that's the no. actor's name. Oh, okay. Uh, sure, why not? We're just going to go with Justice until I can figure out his actual, you know, his, his name <laughs> um, in the movie. Um, yeah, um, so, so here's the thing. I honestly... Tim! Yeah, Tim. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so here's the thing. Ryan Reynolds voicing the, uh, the, the Pikachu is was completely fine. That was nothing weird that. about that. Yeah, that was great. Ryan Reynolds being as Ryan Reynolds, well, not as Ryan Reynolds, but you know, yeah. being he, like he, in he, person I, as that his dad. That kind of took me out of it. That was weird. I just couldn't weird. see him. I just couldn't see it, you know? Yeah. I don't see his, as, oh, that's Tim Sad. I see, yo, that's Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> uh-huh. You know? It's like, um, it's like, oh, uh, what do you, there's some actors who you don't see as their characters, you just yeah. see like as Like, Nicolas the, Cage is like that. Yeah, Nicolas and, uh, Cage. Uh, who else? There's like certain... What's the guy who plays, um, Captain Jack Sparrow? Oh, uh, no, okay, he, he go, turns into his characters. Uh, Johnny Depp? Yeah. No, he turns into his characters. Uh, have you seen Jack Sparrow to, uh, Willy Wonka? It mm. is two different people. You cannot even, like... Like the face that's shape fair. is the only thing you can see that's similar. Have that's you? Se- what other movies have you seen Johnny Depp in? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Let me look exactly. up. Exactly. What... <laughs> because okay. he, he's a chameleon. <laughs> oh yeah, there was that uh, that movie where he was a chameleon. He was in the movie Chameleon. No, he was in a movie as a chameleon. Uh, Rango, I think. Oh yeah, he was. Um. And he was good in that too. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm looking up his movies now. There's not a whole lot I've actually seen. Um, he was in He's... Fantastic Beasts, uh, The Crimes of Grindelwald. He was Grindelwald. <laughs> oh, that's I told weird. you he's a chameleon. Okay, yeah. You don't know who he. Is. Some people don't even know it's Johnny Depp until they see like his name in the title. Like a, uh, oh, but there's some like, I know what you mean. So like back to people who like you can't, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. you can't see them as someone else who's you know, yeah, the actual character. You see them as the actor. Ryan Reynolds is one of those people. It's weird. Because I can see him as Deadpool, right? I see mm-hmm. him in anything else. I see him as Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Um, and then there's a uh, what's his name? Adam Sandler is the oh, same yeah, character in every single movie. He's uh, always on vacation in every movie he is, <laughs> and he's always with a wife or uh, kids yeah. and finding a new wife or finding in love, and it's just so. Pixels, terrible. Pixels, um, I never saw it. Yeah, uh, it was just like cringy, and there's a lot of it. Just everything made no sense, and it was just bad. Um, yeah. What? Uh, so this is not exactly like pe- uh, actors that you don't see as you, you only see as the actors, but Adrian Monk. Um, who, who's who's he? Who's play? Man, who's the actor? Uh, from the show Monk, I watch that show all the time. Tony Shalhoub. I watch that show all the time, and anything else he is in, all I can see is Monk, and it's so weird. Mm. He's in like, um, uh, uh, what's that? What's what's the one with the guy? Um, the guy. Yeah, literally the guy. Spy Kids. That's it. Oh, he's in Spy Kids. Elijah Wood. No, I'm, what? No, I'm talking about Tony Shalhoub. He said he, the guy. No, no, no. In, in Spy uh, Kids Three. The, the, the guy, guy was just Elijah the Wood. Kid. Yeah, the guy was just the character I could remember from Spy Kids. Um, but Tony, yeah, uh, Tony Shalhoub is in Spy Kids as the weird hand guy. 
Um, he was in this other like. Oh, he I know. The family? Yeah, he was in this um. This network, this like uh, HBO show. I can't remember what it was now, but uh, he was in it, and all I could think of was Adrian Monk. And I don't know. Sometimes, mm-hmm. if you're an actor and you are like like the guys from um, Supernatural. They can't be anything else but the oh, guys I mean, from Supernatural. If you think about it, it's partly because of how many seasons they've done. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Saturated and to the point where it, like it's kind of beaten to death at a point. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you play a character long enough, you just are that character. Like, I mean, uh, Tony Stark. If you think about it, uh-huh. it's uh, Robert Downey Jr. is literally Tony Stark at this point, and it's Harry Potter. Amazing. He's trying oh, no. to branch out. He's done some good things. Yeah, he's, but he has branched he's, out. It's he's just still Harry people Potter. Think, hey, he's Harry Potter. And then he's like, nah, no. No, um, yeah, yeah. But, like, it's funny because he, like, he makes fun of it now. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. Robert Patterson. He's going to be Batman. Your thoughts? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, honestly, the people who don't like that are just people, like, still nagging on Twilight. Yeah. And it's funny because he hates Twilight. So who's yeah. better? No. The, en- the entire cast of Twilight hates Twilight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not even, like, it's just, just everyone it's amazing. else. Yeah. Oh, he played Cedric Diggory? In what? Who? Uh, Robert Patterson. I don't, I don't even know what you're talking about. Talking uh, about Cedric, Di- Cedric Diggory was in The Goblet of Fire in yeah. Harry Potter. No, uh, he was in... I yeah, he was in Hufflepuff. I, haven't wa- I didn't watch uh, Harry Potter, but I watched a couple scenes from what was on the TV when I was in Oklahoma with the family. And it was on, and I saw him, and I was like, what's he doing on here? Why is a vampire in Harry Potter? Kristen Stewart is in Charlie's Angels? Gonna... Oh, she's in a new one. They're making a reboot. Did you hear about that? Yeah, I heard about yeah, it. she's going to be in there, any... and she looks actually badass, and it's kind of amazing. <laughs> nice. Like, I didn't expect it. Um, and then uh, there's that girl who, I think the girl from Aladdin is going to be in it, too. The girl? F- oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, uh, s- I think Speaking of Aladdin... Bad. Um, uh, the, oh, the new Will Smith, <laughs> Will Smith, and uh, and Jim and I, Will Smith and Will Smith. Oh, Jim and I, man, it's just so. It's... Why do they use his son? Like, what do you mean? Like, so Jim and I, uh, for those who haven't seen the trailer, it's Will Smith as a hitman being pursued by like younger Will Smith as a hitman, like well, when he's at the prime of his career. Is it because um, like, I think it's. Partly because um, we've seen Will Smith, right? Like yeah. Everyone has seen Will Smith. And we've seen him when he was young, whenever he was, you know, the Fresh Prince. Oh, uh, yeah. That's so true. maybe that's kind of like, oh, my God, he looks exactly like a young Will Smith. Uh, that's fair. That's fair. Um, <laughs> I just, I looked it up. I looked up Aladdin, right? Mm-hmm. This movie's not even, oh, wait, it, it is out. Oh, man, yeah. I didn't know it came out. <laughs> Why? It's got a 56 on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, I, I mean, don't know Rotten I don't think Tomatoes is kind of like... Yeah, you gotta take it with the like with the grain of salt, cause like on IMDb, this has seven point four, ninety three percent like this movie. Mm-hmm. One thing I will say that uh, I really liked about Aladdin, uh, even though I didn't see it, you know, the cast aside from Will Smith, all like uh, and not not what's the word, ethnic, um, all of like the right ethnicity for the for the place where mm. that it's taking place. It's not like whitewashed, like. You know, a lot of other movies. Oh, okay, so, uh, that's it. I don't know why that, th- uh, no, words. I don't know why this made me think of it, but, uh, so, you know, uh, Wreck It Ralph 2, Ralph Break the Internet? Uh huh. So, I saw that recently. It's on Netflix. Also, something else on Netflix that I really wanted to see, uh, I'll remember it later. But, uh, in Wreck It Ralph, you know, there's a scene where all the, uh, Disney princesses are in, right? Yeah. So I got curious, and I looked it up, and every single one of the Disney princesses are voiced by the original actor. Oh. Wait, yeah. really? Every That's a single surprise. one of them. They somehow got them for at least one line, and Dang. they all used... It. Like, I looked it up, each one of them, and I went and cross-sourced, they were all the original actors. And I was, like, actually impressed. Somehow <sighs> they got their original person who voiced Ariel the Mermaid... In like the nineteen nineties movie, how old is the movie? Come on. Obviously, it probably I think it was nineteen ninety nine, um, or maybe ninety seven. But they probably just got like nineteen eighty nine. They probably just got like unused lines or old lines and put them in. If it's no, just like a no, line no, or two. No, it's new. They're new lines. Yes. Talking to her. 
to uh, Pen- Penelope. And oh, it's yeah. kind of amazing because I thought, no, they could not have. And they did. <laughs> it's literally the same. Okay, yeah, that's pretty it's, impressive. It's impressive. Disney, uh, but Wreck It Ralph 2, it was like, the first one was great. It felt nostalgic. This mm-hmm. one. Felt nostalgic. It is, yeah, it felt nostalgic because, like, the games that were going on. Yeah, I suppose. Because they had, like, you know, the game, like, yeah, the game Cuber, and, yeah, it felt like it. But let me be very clear with this it, it's so weird how meta Wrecker Off 2 is because it is so aware that it is clear advertisement that there is a character who is just a pop up. <laughs> and, like, it's, it's like it's going the way of the emoji movie, yeah, it's just so, like. It literally has Facebook, it has Google, it has all the websites, it has all of these apps that are actual things just there, Ugh. sitting in your face, <laughs> and it's not hiding it with any shame. And then they even have a knockoff YouTube, which I thought, oh, okay, so they couldn't get rights from YouTube. And the character says, oh, no, YouTube already has that. And I was like, wait, <laughs> so this means that this website is, oh, I just thought of this. All the websites are self-aware. All the software is self-aware, which means that, like, w- whatever <laughs> we think is, the, like, an algorithm or whatever, it's just the software. Like, no, no, no. I don't like that. We're changing <laughs> this. <laughs> and all your copyright strikes, all you YouTubers, nah, it's just YouTube itself. Nah, YouTube just doesn't like what you're making. <laughs> like, fuck this guy in particular. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like, it's it's so, like, postmodernism. Um mm. Did, did I ever tell you about that? Talk about that? Postmodernism is just a word for people who, who don't like things. The things that people don't like and they don't understand. No, no, it's a... It's like... Hard to describe. It's like... No, I think I actually have to do one. Uh, Nathan, fill the space. I have to remember what I... <laughs> okay, so um, I'm looking at postmodernism, uh, the definition. Uh, if I can spell, that is not at all how to spell postmodernism, but maybe... You know... Google failed me. Post, post, not postmodernism. Postmodernism. Uh, new Spider-Man movie, Far From Home. Oh my god. Hopefully, Spider-Man will finally release that frog in his mouth. What? Postmodernism, a late twentieth-century style and concept in the the arts, architecture, and criticism that represents a departure from modernism and has at its heart a general distrust of grand theories and ideological ad, ad, ideologies, as well as a problematic relationship within any notion of art that doesn't make any sense i'm trying to find it, Is it what are you trying to find it's not it wasn't postmodernism. it's like meta-modernism um the manifesto i, I don't remember if it was manifesto metafiction no, no it's Me- literally called the post modern manifesto or something or the meta-modernist manifesto i'll probably find it later but um yeah pretty much what it's about is because we grew up in a time where television and internet are like booming, right? So like we are very clear. We we know when something's advertising to us. We know mm-hmm. when something's like in our being, face, you know? Being like, sold to oh, us. You could do it through friendship. Stuff mm-hmm. like that. Because we grew up with that, we're so like we are very, very like easy to point out, like, oh yeah, that's that, that's bullshit. Um mm-hmm. this manifesto is saying like we are we're aware of it, and like, uh, pretty much like um the Lego Movie, okay? So it literally the whole like thing about it was the chosen one, remember? Yeah. So, in the movie, he even tells you, yeah, there's no chosen one. I made it up just to give huh. people hope. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the manifesto is saying like, we grew up in this time and we're aware of you know, this whole thing we're about. Aware of it, but it's yeah, we're aware. But, and it happens because we're letting it happen. We're just not gonna... It's hard to explain. It's like... Hold on, give me a second. Just give me <sighs> give me a time. Uh, so... I don't know. Um, it's hard to explain. I just gotta... Uh, so I found... I looked it up and I found the Postmodern Manifesto, who, which was a, un, a unfinished manuscript, unpublished manuscript by... Jacques Derrida, uh, the father of deconstructionist theory, who died in Paris in 2004. Um, and I found basically... it. Is that it? No. Uh, There's a little website called the metamodernism.org, and it's what I was talking about. It's like, we, we, like, okay, so, uh, number one, 
We recognized. I don't remember that word. Whatever. Uh, I'll just send a link in the description. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too tired to read all this, but pretty much it's trying to say is that we are aware of these things that happen in the world, that these cliches, and we play on those cliches by like not twisting it on the head to make a twist, but we're gonna play on it and make it very sarcastic, and we're still gonna do it. We're just gonna make it so that you know, even though it's a clear cliche, we can work past it and still put out these morals. Mm. Yeah. This is interesting. I found the website. It's oscillation, by the way. You recognize oscillation to be the natural order of the world. Yeah. Like, I really like that because that's kind of like how, of course, that's how I think. Like, I'm aware. We recognize the repetitive variation um, of to be the natural order of the world. So basically, we recognize that there are these reboots and remakes of the same things, and there's not a whole lot of like Crazy. new and yeah, new ideas uh, in the the sort of the big leagues of Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Um, like, if you uh, let me bring up. Um, if I go to the website for my local uh, movie theater, uh, Showtimes, there is Spider-Man. I believe mean, that's not too, like, new. But there's Aladdin, Toy Story, um, Aladdin, Toy Story, uh, Men in Black. Yeah, Men in Black, Godzilla. It's just like it's. It's this all is a, of none of these are new things. Spider-Man. Yeah, it's just Annabelle. New takes. Even much. yesterday is about the Beatles. It's uh-huh. nostalgic. This yesterday is literally an isekai, but to like an alternate history. Yeah. But yeah, it's like everything's so. Saturated. Aladdin. How did I forget Aladdin? We I talked know. about it. Everything's yeah, so saturated, it's... but like. Even though stuff is saturated, we can still make it good. We can still have like, oh yeah, we can, we did it through friendship. But it doesn't have to be clearly just the cheesy kind of anime. My strength comes through my friends. It could be like, my strength comes through my friends, even if my friends aren't going to be there for me all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, like I know they they care for me, and that's all I need. So yeah, so I really like that. Like. Uh, it's just because, you know, we've grown up in a time where, like, advertise is, everything is advertised, like, everything. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're trying Literally, to buy something everywhere you look. Everyone, look around your room, I guarantee you, you'll be able to find at least five brands. Uh, I guarantee you probably find a hundred if you look around wherever you are. Yeah, at least, like... You'll never be able. You'd never stop finding yeah. them. You are not immune to propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, which basically just means like you always have to be a lookout, and if you're not paying, you're the product. Yep, you are being wait. Are you being sold. <laughs> no. well yeah, like your information, like Facebook. You don't pay for that, but they take your information and sell that, so you are the product. I mean, if you really think about it, well. Uh, no, let's save that for another one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I think that's going to be it for this episode. Let's see if anything else do you want to add, Josh. Unless I what? Have anything you want to add? Um, sharks. Sharks are good. Uh, gummy sharks are better. No, just sharks. Sharks, that's fair. Okay. Anyways, uh, let's, let's, let's sign off. Let's wrap this up. Yeah. Okay. So go, uh, go ahead. Thanks for joining us this episode of the podcast to be named. Uh, again, if you have any suggestions for the name, feel free to put in the comments below. If there are any suggestions for shows or things we could do, feel free to comment that as well. We'd love to hear from you all, no matter what, it, what it's about, as long as it's positive. Uh, well, not positive, but good. Um, check out other content. This is the first, uh, there were the first new series of the podcast um we'll be be doing those these uh once a month every the first of every month um josh might be doing his vlogs right vlogs the vlogs um, vlogs and check out other content you know lots of good stuff coming up new uh, more production bigger production value and uh remember 
deeper and brighter. See you next time. Goodbye. Bye.